Greetings everyone. Welcome. I trust you're all safe. I'm your facilitator for this morning. I am Mr. Khan. I hail from Ungungunglovo TVET College down in Peter Marisburg, Natal. We'll be looking today at Report 191, Building Drawing N3. Our section or what we're going to cover today is reinforcing of concrete and beams. What we hope to achieve by this session is to understand what is reinforcing of concrete? Why is concrete reinforced? How is concrete reinforced? Advantage of reinforcing concrete? Construction of reinforcing structure, reinforced structures? So let us start people. Let's look at what we know. We are familiar with concrete which is a mixture of cement, sand and stone to which we add water and it becomes a plasticky or a compounded mixture. We also know that concrete is excellent in respect of compressive strength but weak when it comes to tensile strength. Compressive strength is the strength of the concrete. That is harder concrete measure under compression. So what we do there, they take a block of the concrete once it's dried and cured, put it under pressure and see where is the breaking point. Tensile strength. The ability of concrete to withstand pulling strength without breaking. So concrete must have a strength when we place weight on it as well as at pulling and pushing strength. What is reinforced concrete? This is concrete in which steel is embedded in such a manner that the two materials act together in resisting a force. The steel, we can say, makes the concrete stronger. Here's an example of some reinforcing steel that we have. As you can see, it's been twisted in such a way that it forms a reinforcement, some more reinforcing steel. Why is reinforcing used? We all ask that question. Did we ever sit and ponder how we have two, three, four story buildings going up, how we have bridges going up? We need to use reinforcing. We need to make the steel, we need to make the concrete stronger. Why is reinforcing used? Structures undergo stresses. A good example is a bridge. The weight of the traffic on the bridge all the time. We have a normal car, we have a truck, we can have a supersized truck. We talk about a 4 ton, 10 truck, 20 ton truck on a bridge. It must be able to hold the weight. When we add steel, it makes the concrete stronger. Concrete resists squeezing due to compression. And steel resists bending due to stretching. And that is what we call tensile stretch or tensile strength. Before we get to know the how of reinforcing, we need to determine the amount of weight that is imposed on a structure. In order to do this, we need to enlist the service of a civil engineer. And that's what we are starting towards, is to become a civil engineer. A civil engineer that can come out and do calculations on strengths, on beams, on weight, what structures can carry, what structures can do, what they can't do. The engineer prepares a schedule of, she of steel that is required for the concrete to be reinforced. How is reinforcement done? The steel is prepared either on site or off site. Remember we spoke about the engineer? The engineer gives us a drawing, a detailed drawing of the steel that is required. Once we've got the detailed instruction of the steel, it will tell us the thickness of the steel that is required. It will tell us the length of the steel that is required. It will tell us the design and what we need to use to reinforce the concrete. So the structure for that is prepared either on site or off site. The steel is placed where needed and raised slightly so that there is a space at the bottom. We prepare all form work to remind you again what is form work is where we place boards around the steelwork to enclose it in order to pour concrete into that structure. Concrete is then poured over the steelwork 
and vibrated in order for the concrete to settle and remove air pockets. Remember, if you pour concrete and just leave it like that, we have air pockets in between. If there's air pockets in between, we have problem. So a vibrator is used to vibrate the concrete to remove air pockets. The slide in front of you shows a structure that has been done where steel work has been formed. We've done all the form work. We've placed the steel. If you look carefully and closely to this, say it's made in the form of a basket where at the bottom there's a space. All is tied together. Specifications of this reinforcing is given by the civil engineer. The following slide shows us concrete being poured over the steelwork. You'll notice once again that the concrete is poured over the, over the steelwork embedding the steelwork between the concrete and the steel. The following slide also goes further and shows us concrete being poured and you can see closely that concrete is going under the steelwork and above the steelwork. So it's forming a cage over the steel. Here we can see workers vibrating the steel to remove the air pockets, to remove air pockets. Why? If we don't remove air pockets, we'll have spaces in the steel or spaces in the reinforcing compromising the strength of the reinforcing. The concrete is then floated once it has been poured and vibrated to bring it to a level surface. This can be done either by hand or by a power floater. Concrete is left to cure. The process and the time that is used for curing concrete is very important. Curing of concrete can take anything between 7 up to 28 days. How is concrete cured? We discussed this in earlier modules where we pound it with water, we place plastic sheets over them, you can place wet sacks over them, you can place sawdust that is wet over them. So the drying process or the evaporation of water from the concrete happens at a steady pace and not too quickly. Because if it happens too quickly, the water evaporates too quickly, the strength of the concrete is compromised. Once the concrete has been cured, all your formwork, all your timber work is removed. Example of them pouring concrete, here we can see a truck laden with concrete. This is pre-mixed concrete that has come onto site, it's poured. We can see they are doing a manual leveling of the concrete by then pulling through a straight edge over the concrete. The following slide shows us where we use a power float. Construction worker is power floating the surface to bring it smooth and level. Once this is done, we can either screed, we can tile, we can carpet over this here. Being the outside, it could be having paving as well. Okay, now that we have a look at how the process of reinforcing is done, why reinforcing is done, the importance of reinforcing, we can move forward to the advantages of reinforcing. One advantage increases the strength of concrete as it ages. Remember, the longer concrete cures, the more strong it gets. The longer the steel is in there, the stronger it gets. It provides resistance against air and water without any maintenance. It does not rot and is fire resistant. So those are some of the advantages of a concrete floor or reinforced concrete and it goes to say looking at the last statement being fire resistant it's very important that in today's society we live in that we must ensure that we are safe and one of the ways to ensure that is to ensure that we do the work correctly and we reinforce properly now we're going to look at construction of reinforced structures and what we're going to look at is a plan view of a concrete floor very little changes to the structure We've discussed before, in building and civil technology and in building drawing entry, a suspended wooden floor. Nothing has really changed in the far as the system is concerned. What has changed is the terminologies and what we're using. Example, we had, as indicated by my arrow on this diagram in front of you, we can see we've got reinforced concrete walls. 
this when we did our our uh, suspended wooden floor was what we call our sleeper wall then where we have reinforced reinforced columns that was our bearers going across we had our floor joists coming in which is our reinforced beams so looking at the structure for a concrete floor we first of all first of all have our reinforced pillars on the side followed by secondary beams going over and our main beam going across so our secondary beams run horizontally and our main beam if for example sake run vertically right remember all this is according to engineering specs and engineering specs are given by the civil engineer a section through a T beam now T beam we can look at it in this way the T beam is a structure and looking at our suspended wooden floor is a structure that takes place or takes replaces what we were looking at the bare wall with a floor joist above it but here we have our T beam that is supported by a concrete column and our reinforcing bars running across almost on a cantilever basis but remember at the end of this year we're going to have our reinforced concrete columns coming in as well to hold it in place so this is how our t-beam looks now we talk about y bars t bars compression bars distribution bars these are all different terminologies given we talk about the y example on this scenario here we're looking at what we call a y20 10 style bars and they say 200 cc we understand by 200 cc means center to center right we're going to look at an n beam an n beam is the same thing but fits on the end remember the t beam sit in the center on a bearer the n beam sits as how our sleeper wall on a suspended floor would sit in it has distribution bars main bars and stirrups as illustrated covered by concrete all the steel that you see here is encased or covered by concrete to make it stronger okay we look at the section through a reinforced beam where we can see the wall this beam is inserted into the wall and reinforced concrete is placed or concrete is placed over the reinforcing to form a concrete floor Okay, now we need to analyze some steel codes. I spoke to you about the Y and the 20 and the CC and all the rest of it. So when they tell us Y, the Y basically means it's a type of steel, whether it's reinforced or unreinforced. The 20 talks about the diameter or the size of the steel that we're using. And the CC means the spacing between the steel bars that is needed. So the Y is the type of steel the 20 would be the diameter of the steel and the CC means the spacing of the steel center to center. Now that we've covered the N beam and the T beam, I want you to take three minutes guys. And I want to give you a little exercise on the board. We do not have to draw this to scale, but I need to understand and you need to understand whether we can, we, we know where we're going with this here. So I want you to draw not to scale a T beam A T beam showing reinforcing. So we're going to have our T beam, we're going to have reinforcing, we're going to use steel. Uh, let us break that down the following way. Our distribution bars will be Y10 millimeters, 150 center to center. So this will be our distribution bars. one two we're going to use y 20s for our tension bars okay and those tension bars will be 200 center to center okay. then our main bar y12 
And that one there will also keep it 200 center to center. Okay, let's take three minutes, just a rough sketch for us to understand how a, a T-section or a T-beam works on reinforced concrete. All right, guys, your three minutes are up. Let's go through it step by step or quickly. First of all, we said we have our reinforced beam that's sitting in the center here. Remember dividing or supporting the slab coming over, the T-beam coming over. We have our concrete floor on the top. We have our column here, our reinforced concrete column. On that is basically an illustration of where our floor sits, our concrete floor. Remember, this is all concrete here. This is concrete going through. So we're looking at the T, which is supporting this floor on either side. All right? So we start in the center, where we spoke about our tensile bars here. Our tensile bars. Now, tensile bars is forming a framework. Going that way. Okay? Should actually be increased a little higher, because it's going into the concrete there. So our tensile bars are fitting here. Remember we said the space between these two here are 200 millimeters, 200 millimeters center to center. And we're using Y20, so it will be Y20, 200 millimeters center to center. That's what we're looking at, right? Then we speak about the main bars. The main bars are actually running across, so my main bar will be running across here, running across that way. Okay, so this is the main bar. And we said again, the main bar is Y12, 200 
center to center. So in other words, the spacing from here to there is 200 millimeters. Okay? Right. Then we look at our distribution bars. Our distribution bars fit in Distribution bars, Y10, 150, center to center. So we have our distribution bars, center to center. We have our main bars. We have our tension bars here. On this here is what we're placing concrete all over here. Concrete goes above, concrete goes below. Concrete goes below, in between all that. So this whole entire structure is covered with concrete. So that's how our T-beam should look at when we finish off with it. We have our steel, we have our stirrups, our stirrups also coming in. These are three components that they could ask us, they could ask us to put in what we call stirrups. Stirrups are the side frames or they ask us to show the stirrups. PPUS, stirrups that fit in on the side making the framework. So if you look at this here, what actually happens is this is a box that makes like that. We have our tension bars coming in there. Main bars going over. Distribution bars going like that. So that's how it looks. Take this entire thing, place it in here, encase it in concrete, making a structure. So this entire thing here is covered with concrete now. making it reinforced concrete. So we can understand how a T-beam works in reinforced concrete. With that said and done guys, we can move forward and here's a practice exercise that you need to complete. Specifications on your screen in front of you. Draw to scale 1 is to 10, a cross section through a double reinforced beam. The beam consists of concrete stirrups, compression rods, 10 style rods and concrete cover. Your specifications are as follows. Reinforced concrete, 300 millimeters. Your 10 style rods, 20 millimeters. Your compression rods, 20 millimeters. Your stirrups are 10 millimeters. Your concrete cover is 25 millimeters. Thank you and be safe.